Well, here we are this week, Drawing Outdoors with Miss Ross. And we're going to be making a picture that involves a color wheel, which has the primary and the secondary colors in it. So we'll talk about those. And we're going to turn that color wheel into an umbrella. So I'll show you a little quick sketch of what it's going to look like before it's been colored. So this is a two-week project. Week one will be following the steps I'm about to go over to create a color wheel. It has six colors in it. And we're going to turn that into an umbrella with a little person, possibly you, under the umbrella in a rainstorm. And the second week will be coloring in the primary and secondary colors. So we may talk a bit about that now, but you won't actually get to the coloring and the mixing of colors until week two. So it takes a long time to do the drawing part. So we'll watch the video and then get yourself a piece of paper. Remember to pause the video as much as you need to so you can catch up and I don't wanna to go too fast for anybody. Let's start by drawing a hexagon that has six sides and we'll turn them into six triangles with six different colors, every color of a color wheel. You're going to wanna find a straight edge to draw from and to trace. So this length is just about perfect. It's a business card. See if your parents have one they can lend you, or you could use a ruler, but you want all of the lines to be the same length. I'm drawing one diagonal slanted line and putting a dot in the center. And now I'm going through the middle where the dot is to try to create an X. So after I lift this up, you'll see I have an X on my paper. I'm now gonna put the card right through the middle of the X horizontally. So I end up with three long lines, or you could say six short lines coming from the center. Continue tracing your straight edge card to connect each one of the ends of the lines. So you end up with six triangles that all touch in the middle. The larger shape you would call a hexagon. It's a six sided geometric shape. Each one of these triangle spaces is going to be colored in differently so it looks like a color wheel, but we won't get to that part today. Now I'm going to pull out my example that I already started so you can see what I'm about to do. That hexagon is gonna become an umbrella that's being pulled to the side and we're gonna make a person under the umbrella, but you're not gonna be able to see their face. So this is a little jacket, a little rain jacket that the person's wearing. See if you can copy this shape on your paper. We're gonna make one arm reaching out to feel the raindrops. So make a sleeve and a hand coming out from under the umbrella. You might see a little bit of the other arm too that's holding up the handle of the umbrella. We can draw that here. Now we need two legs. So I'm gonna draw three lines and pretend that those two legs are touching each other. And now I need to put two boots. Something simple like that, and another one behind. Next, we need to make a fun puddle. You can make your puddle as big or as small as you want. It could be water or it could be mud. I like to make a curvy line that connects around like this. And I'll make a horizon line in the back. That's just where the land would meet the sky. Everything above that line will be the sky. Everything below that line will be grass. I'm gonna fill mine in with a lot of clouds because it's a rainy day. It's going to be a cloudy day. They can even be behind the umbrella a bit. Now this isn't very safe, but I put a lightning bolt coming out of one of my distant clouds. This looks like splashing raindrops. They're hitting the pond and splashing water back up. And then little tiny raindrops filling up the sky is a great thing to draw next. I wouldn't put any on top of your umbrella because we're gonna be coloring that in next week and the raindrops might just get in the way. So fill it up with as many raindrops as you like. And that's all we need to do for today. We'll come back next week and do the background. Welcome back to part two of the video where we will be mixing colors. Now red and yellow and blue 
are called the primary colors because they can be used to make the secondary colors. You cannot make a primary color by mixing two colors together, so you cannot make red, yellow, or blue by mixing. But you can make orange, purple, and green. Those are the secondary colors, and we're going to be doing that today. We're going to be mixing two primary colors to create a secondary color in the shape of a color wheel. So look at this umbrella. That was made entirely using the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, even though you do see orange, green, and purple on the umbrella. So I'm going to show you how we can make them today. Let's see what you already know. Red and yellow make what new color? Yellow and blue make what new color? Red and blue make what new color? If you said red and yellow make orange, you would be correct. Yellow and blue make green. That's right. Red and blue make violet or purple. That is the correct answer. This student used watercolor paints, and you may too if you have them at home. But many of you only have crayons, so I'm going to show you how you can do the same project using crayons to mix colors. Let's first start with the three primary colors. Find a red, yellow, and blue crayon. We're going to color in one of the triangles of our color wheel with red. I like to color darker on the outline of the triangle and then fill it in. And that way it stays a little bit neater. Fill it in nice and dark with that red crayon. Very bright. Not scribbly at all. Take your time and fill it in. Next, I want you to use your yellow crayon and color in another triangle, but leave a space between the yellow and the red. We're going to be creating a secondary color in that empty space. The first thing we'll do is use our three primary colors to color in three of the spaces, but always leave an empty space in between your primary colors. Now we're ready to make our first secondary color. We're going to take the red crayon and the yellow crayon and mix them together in the space that we left between the red and yellow. We're going to start off with the darker of the two colors, and red is darker than yellow. So we're going to fill it in first with red, but notice how it doesn't look the same as my red space. I'm not pressing as hard. I want to have a lighter red so that when I mash this yellow really hard on top of it, the little particles of crayon can mix together and actually create the color orange. So you're going to go light with the red first and heavy with the yellow second. Mash them together until it makes a perfect orange. Now we're ready to make green. Use your yellow and your blue crayon and mix them in the space that you left between the yellow and the blue. Start with the darker color. Blue is darker than yellow. But when you color it in, don't press as hard as you did when you were coloring in the blue space. This is like a lighter blue. Use the same crayon, but press lighter. And then you're going to take your yellow crayon and press very, very hard on top of this to mix the two together into a beautiful green. In the last space, we're going to mix our blue and our red together to make purple. Purple is sometimes called violet. Blue is a little bit darker than red, not by much, but we're going to use the blue first and again press lightly. But the difference here is that when you put the red on top, because it is such a dark color, we're not going to press it real, real hard like we did with the yellow. We're not mashing it on there, because if you did, it would probably turn it red. So we're putting a light layer of red on top of the blue, and sometimes this is very challenging to make a pretty purple. So if you have another type of red, maybe one that says red violet, you could add a bit of that red-violet crayon on top just to help that purple to become a little bit prettier. I like that already. Now I like to use my marker, my black marker, and it does not need to be permanent, so any black marker will do. If you'd like to use a black crayon, you can even use that to outline all the pencil marks. Remember, this project can be done 
with watercolor paints if you have them and combinations of crayon and marker. I think it's a little tricky to use marker to make the orange, purple, and green because markers don't always blend very nicely. So you can use marker for everything else though, but coloring in the color wheel should either be paint or crayon or even colored pencil is sometimes effective for blending two colors together. Well, I'm done with mine, and I did mine in crayon and a little bit of marker. And here's another student that used watercolor paint, and I see some crayon there too. When you're done, don't forget to take a picture and share it with Miss Ross.